Welcome to our Cisco DevNet video series on Cloud Security API. In today's episode, we will be diving into Cisco Secure Access Getting Started content together with Yaron Kaspi, API Product Manager at Cisco. Thanks, Alexei. So yeah, um, in order to get started, really the first thing that you need to do is to authenticate. So um, what you're looking at right now are the Cisco Cloud Security uh, API docs. And here we have different sections. Basically, we have a section for umbrella and we have a section for secure access. And we're going to be focusing on secure access. Um, but if you are familiar with umbrella, they are very, very similar in terms of how you actually authenticate. Um, both are REST APIs and both use Auth2 as an authentication uh, mechanism. Um, we're going to take a very, very, very short look here. But as you can see, this is a pretty step-by-step -step process, right? Uh, how to sign in to secure access, how to manage your API keys. Let's show what that actually looks like. So if you're in secure access, you would go to admin and then underneath admin into the API keys. All right. And we're going to create a new API key. And we can just give it any name. Ideally, it would be meaningful, but it could be really any name. We could call it um, my sim integration, and you can give it a description. It's completely free text, so you can give it pretty much any description that you want. However, ideally, you would pick something that would make things easier for you to manage different API keys or credentials. Um, but then comes the really important piece. The really important piece is selecting the access scopes. The access scopes determine what this credential will be able to do. And in order to make things easier, we've kind of split them into a bunch of high-level groups to kind of give you a getting started perspective, right? So for example, if my getting started perspective is around my Roman computers, then I could go into deployments. That's my high level use case. And then I would scroll down until I get to my Roman computers and I can determine whether it's gonna be a read only access or read write access. And if I wanna add other access scopes, then I just need to select them. For example, maybe I also wanna bring back some information around um, uh, the high level reports or maybe even granular reports Basically, each one of the access scopes that we add, as they get added to the right pane, those basically dictate what this credential can do. The next thing that we can do is we can set an expiration date, and we can also set network restrictions, which would determine where this API uh, credential uh, would work from. The by default, they uh, work from any location, but you can kind of narrow it to a specific location for the API key, click on create key, and great. What we get is an API key and an API secret that we can now use in order to authenticate. Let's look at an example of what that looks like. So I'm going to share. My terminal. And just clean it up. OK, so I'm sharing my terminal now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the API key and the API secret that we got in the previous stage in order to authenticate. So step number one, we're going to make a request to get our access token. Uh, I'm using CURL, but you could use any API, uh, any API client. Uh, that you would like to use or any uh, programming language that you prefer to use. Uh, we're just using CRL for the sake of simplicity. You can see we're making a request here to api.ssc.cisco.com, use case being off for authentication. V2 is our major version, and we're asking for an access token. So I'm plugging in the API key that we got in the dashboard, and I'm also going to plug in the key secret. And 
This is our very first request. Um, you can see we received our access token, which is the string. It's just basically base64. You can see that it expires in one hour, 3,600 seconds, okay? Um, what happens is within that one hour, you don't need to request another access token. You can continue using this access token throughout that entire hour. Towards the end of it, you should request a new one in order for your integration not to get interrupted. Great. Yeah. So now that we have an access token, what we're going to do is we're going to make a request. And I'm just going to copy over that request. There we go. So very similar. Again, we're using CRL. We're calling api.sse.cisco.com. This time, however, our use case is around deployments. Major version is still v2, but we're calling roaming computers. That's the endpoint we're interested in. Notice that we're using an authorization bearer header in order to authenticate. This is exactly where you would paste in your access token. All right, now this is a bit hard to read. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pretty print it with uh, JQ in my case, but you could use anything or any tool that you're interested in order to format the JSON. I just prefer using JQ because it's very portable. Okay, and here we go. We have our list of the different roaming computers that we have within our environment. We've made our first API requests and looking forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thank you. Thanks a ton, Yaron. See you.